What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another Fish the Moment live stream. Great to see everyone on. I haven't been on the live stream for, I think, two weeks now. And the last one I did was kind of choppy because of my internet connection, but hopefully it'll be good today. And so before we get into it, I want to let all my new viewers know that this is my live stream format. And so if this is the first video you're watching on my channel, go down to my channel down below and check out one of my shorter form videos that's anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes long. It's a better introduction to the channel. On my live stream here, I'm gonna be breaking down lakes for my Patreon members using Navionics and Google Earth. And it's a really cool way Way to look at a lot of different lakes and show you where I would fish on different lakes, but it's definitely a lot of information, especially if it's your first time to the channel. So check out some of my reviews first and definitely come back if you want some more in-depth instruction or just stick around and hang out with all of us if you're here live. So good to see everyone in the chat. I already see a bunch of people commenting. Uh, I saw a bunch of people say they were going to be here on my social media posts, so I'm excited to see everyone again. i got a ton of people in here. Good to see Aaron, Bree, uh, Clifford, Tyler, Judd, Robert, uh, Caleb, Thomas, ton of people who are on right now. Great to see everyone. And uh, I did see a question here from Roger. I know that uh, you've asked this question several times. I haven't been able to get back to you, but how did you do in your tournament on Beaver Lake? And I actually didn't get to fish that tournament. Unfortunately, I was really busy preparing for the Bassmaster Classic and setting up my new website that you guys may have seen on my YouTube page. And so I wasn't able to actually get out and fish that tournament. I have a tournament potentially next weekend, but I think again, I might have to miss that just with uh, all the overwhelming response that you guys have given me on my website and also just trying to put out more video content. But hoping to get into some more tournament fishing as the year goes on, especially when we get to the summer, I'll be able to do a lot more uh, tournament fishing, hopefully. And so that was that, but uh, seeing everyone um, see here, uh, Ben saying, uh, at a bar, so volume is off, but here to let you know, I will watch later, appreciate what you do, thanks, Ben. Um, and then Bree's asking, shore fishing video, please. I do have some older shore fishing videos, if you want to go back to the very beginning of my channel, I do have some of that. Uh, content. It's like first like six or seven videos. But anyways, uh, today on the stream, guys, I'm going to be talking about the transition from the pre-spawn to the spawn and breaking down my Patreon subscribers lakes. And so the lakes we have on the stream today are going to be over here on the center right side of the screen. So look at Lake Lanier in Georgia. And that was recommended by Bob um, Gargosh. And then we have Lake Fayette in Texas. And there are two guys that actually suggested that. So Josh uh, Cutts and Don McCutcheon. And then finally, we have Norris Lake in Tennessee. And Robert Gilbert suggested that lake. So we're going to be looking kind of all around the country. The fish are going to be in different stages of the spawn in those different parts of the country. And so some of the bass have already probably been spawning for a while down in Texas. They're probably just getting their spawning ritual in Georgia. Maybe they've been spawning a little bit there too. And then Norris Lake in Tennessee, they're probably still in that late pre-spawn pattern. So we'll be able to kind of look uh, all around and kind of look at the lake. But seeing a bunch of guys saying that... Um uh, saying that my dis description is copied from the last one. Yes, I do realize that. I will change that. Appreciate the uh, call out there, Caleb. Um, a lot of guys commenting, saying they saw me at the Classic, too, and um, also meeting at the Classic, Ian, uh, and a few other guys. Great to connect to the Classic and see everyone there. I uh, got a ton of people to come up with up and talk to me. There were like 60 or 70 guys who were able to say hi, so pretty awesome. So, Enough talking. I know that uh, we got about 120 people on now, so hopefully more will kind of stream in and come in as the stream's on. But I want to start jumping straight into the first lake, which is going to be Lake Lanier in Georgia. So let's jump into it. Here we go, Lake Lanier in Georgia. So I've actually taken a look at Lake Lanier, I think a couple of times now. It's a pretty popular lake. A lot of different guys are suggesting it. So there's a lot of guys who watch my content from that Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina area. So it should be pretty instructive. And I'm going to be focusing on basically where the fish go from that pre-spawn period where the water temperatures are in the 50, 55 degree range to when they start spawning and the water temperatures hit 60 degrees up to 65 degrees. And the areas I'm looking for, they 
types of patterns that I like to run, and really the best spawning areas on these types of lakes. And so a couple of things I wanted to kind of talk about first here, uh, before we get into that too, I will be responding to everyone's questions just so you know. Uh, normally I try to take a little bit of a break between lakes to look through a few questions, and then I'll also respond to as many as I can at the end of the stream. If you do have a question, make sure to do at fish the moment and put a bunch of question marks at the end of your questions, so, you know, so I know it's actually a question and not just discussion uh, or people saying, hey, and so that's the best way for me to actually see your questions. So anyways, a uh, bunch of good spots here on Lake Lanier, and before we get into exactly which areas I want to fish, a couple things I want to talk about that I think a lot of guys may have heard before, but they may have not have fully explained in a you know video or on the Bassmaster, stuff like that. And the first is that the fish on this lake will be in different stages of the spawn, depending on which part of the lake you're fishing. And I just made a video on this a few weeks ago and talking about how the upper end of Lake Lanier or in the upper end of pretty much any lake where you have dirtier, muddier water is going to warm up faster. And those bass are going to spawn sooner than the fish on the bottom end of the lake where you have really clear water. And so the fish on the bottom end of the lake may not spawn till maybe mid-April and these fish on the upper end of the lake might start spawning at the beginning of April. And... You can watch that video on my channel. It's the last like full video I have. It's like Van Dam driving a boat with his like brain thinking about fish. Um, you'll see the thumbnail if you want to check that video out. And another thing I didn't talk about in that video is that a lot of times these fish will also move up to spawn at different times of the day depending on which side of the lake you're fishing. So if you're looking at Lake Lanier here, and you see we have the west side of the lake and the east side of the lake. And if you think about the sun, whenever it rises in the morning, it's going to rise in the east, set in the west. Everyone knows that. And when the sun is rising in the east and it's setting in the west, all of the banks on the west side of the lake are going to get sun first. And whenever you have sun, that's going to warm up the water. And what happens on a lot of these lakes is that the fish will pull up to spawn sooner in the day and also sooner, like maybe a couple days before the fish on the east side of the lake because the west side of the lake is going to warm up faster. And so any banks that have a lot of extra sun on them, like maybe these pockets in here, are going to get a lot of extra sun and that's really going to warm up the water. And it may not, again, affect the when the fish come up and spawn as far as like the time of year or the, the day of the like the month, but what it'll do is it'll warm up that, that water a little bit quicker. And what happens is that in some of these shallow pockets where you have shallow water, let's say up here in this pocket, you have you know two, three feet of water up on the bank, that shallow water will warm up quicker because of the sun. And what happens is when these fish are spawning, they don't stay up on their beds all day long when they're first thinking about moving up to actually lay their eggs. Instead, they'll move up when it's warm and they'll dust off the area around their beds. They'll clean off the beds when it's warm. They'll move back off when it gets cold, when the sun goes down, things like that. And then after they actually start laying their eggs, that's when the water temperature is warm enough where they can stay there pretty much all night. A lot of times the males will stay there all night. The females might move on and off the beds a little bit and get pushed off by a cold front, but normally the males stay up all night. And so these females will move up and start making their beds and start protecting their eggs whenever that water is war the warmest. And it warms up to 60, 62, 63 degrees. And so if you have that sun beating down on this bank first thing in the morning, that water's going to warm up faster and those females are going to move up onto the beds earlier in the day. So what you can do is you can come up to these western shores and start finding those spawning bass earlier in the day. Let's say 7, 8, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning. Another thing that that's really cool about that though is that because that sun is now rising in the east and setting in the west, these western bank or the eastern banks are now going to warm up later in the afternoon. And so a lot of guys may be running through these eastern banks first thing in the morning and not finding any spawning bass. Maybe in the afternoon in practice the day before the tournament, they were finding spawning bass all up and down these banks. And the next morning they come to these spawning bays and they're like, the fish are gone. Where would all the spawning bass go? It's because it got cold that night before, though, and that sun went down over the horizon. The water cooled down, and the females pulled off the beds. And they don't come back up onto the beds until that sun warms up the bank in the afternoon, and that sun actually hits these banks in the afternoon in, let's say, noon or 1 o'clock. And so a lot of times when I'm fishing these lakes, like Lake Lanier, where you have a pretty big lake, and you have a good eastern shore and a good 
western shore. What I'll do is I'll try to find some spawning bass on the west side of the lake and go to those fish first thing in the morning. And then as the day progresses, I'll start catching those fish, catching those fish. And then as I feel like I'm running out of fish or I want to save some fish on the west side of the lake if I'm fishing a multi-day tournament, I'll then run over and fish banks on the east side of the lake. And the reason I do that is because those fish aren't going to move up onto the beds till later in the afternoon. And even if guys are fishing through these pockets or whatever, they're not going to catch those fish because they haven't moved up yet. So a lot of times you can kind of time it to say, okay, I'm going to spend from 8 or 7 o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock on the west side of the lake and then spend from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock to the end of the tournament on the east side of the lake and kind of stay with those spawning bass. The bass won't be as pressured on the east side throughout the day because they haven't moved up yet. And that's kind of a way that uh, you can think about how to target some of these bass and kind of planning. And so not only does the lake on the top end of the lake or the bottom of the lake change when the fish move up to spawn by calendar date, the sun can also affect when the bass move up to the beds during a specific day, which is really cool. And then as far as like areas I'm going to be looking for, like on Lake Lanier, it's pretty straightforward. It's not that uh, complicated when I'm thinking about areas to look for when the spawn. And I try not to focus too much on these big giant lakes about the type of um, bank that I'm fishing down. A lot of times, you know, you can find fish on the really flat banks in the backs of these pockets. And so if you look at this bank here, you can see the contour lines are really spread out. And a lot of times bass like to spawn in these really flat banks because the shallower the bank, the sooner they'll warm up. But at the same time, a lot of times these bass will spawn on these super steep banks where the contour lines are really close together because you may have like a bluff wall and it'll create like a stair step like that. And it'll stair step down, and you'll create another stair step, and those fish will actually spawn up on top of those, those ledges or those stair steps on bluff walls. So, you know, you can find fish on bluff walls spawning, you can find them in the backs of pockets on these flat banks spawning, it doesn't really matter. What matters though is which pockets you're actually looking in. And so I did make a video about the spawn. It's called my complete guide to spawning bass. Where do bass spawn? And literally no one watched that video. Like it has like 4,000 views. My video on pre-spawn bass fishing that's the exact same. It's just the pre-spawn version of it. Got 75,000 views. And people love it. I have another video that has 5,000 views. The complete guide to the spawn. It's the exact same as that pre-spawn video at 75,000 views, it's just no one found the 5,000 view video and it's full of just amazing, like juicy content that uh, people love, the people who've watched it, it doesn't have a single dislike. Everyone who's watched it has loved the video, but no one's watching it. So it's on my channel, I posted it on my community feed, on my um, YouTube page. If you go on the mobile app, you can go to my community, community page and find it. Um, but also, it's I'll uh, leave a link down below after this video is posted so you guys can see that video. But definitely watch that video, it's really good. I don't know why no one's watching it. But anyways, in that video, one thing I talk about is the different types of pockets that I try to look for. And the big thing that I look for when I'm trying to find spawning bass in a big lake like Lake Lanier is places where the pocket is protected from the wind as much as possible. And so, for example, if I'm running into this creek right here, I want to think about pockets where the wind's not going to be blowing directly into that pocket at full force. And so if you look at this pocket here, you have a big open bay, you have this funnel, which is going to funnel current and funnel wind. And so that means that this whole shoreline and these whole pockets, like this pocket here, all these pockets, could get completely washed out if you have a really strong south wind blowing through this chute and into this bay. All these pockets as well, pretty much this whole area, could get blown out by a south, southeast wind. That's going to cool down the water, it's going to stir up the water, and the bass are not going to want to spawn there as much, especially when that wind's really kicking. At the same time, if you get a really strong east wind blowing through this pocket, all of these shorelines are going to get completely toast by that strong east wind. And the same case here, if you have a strong west wind blowing. So what I try to look for are pockets that are protected from pretty much all wind directions. For example, a pocket like this one right here. If you look at this pocket, regardless of whether you have a really strong east wind, it'll blow right across the mouth of that pocket. A west wind, again, it'll blow across the south uh, end of this pocket. A strong north wind, where well, you have the whole bank protecting it. And a strong south wind, where well, you may get a little bit of wind, but it's in the back of a creek and there's not going to be enough water for the, the waves to actually build up because you have shore and trees right here. So this pocket right here is pretty much completely protected. 
Now the back of this pocket, if you have a strong east wind, it's going to blow straight down the chute of this pocket, and it's going to muddy up all the water back here. And again, you may find some spawning bass there, but you're less likely to find them. Another good pocket would be like this pocket right here. It's kind of tucked in, protected. If you have any kind of wind directions, these, the back of these pockets are going to be protected, and the bass are more likely to spawn in the backs of these types of pockets. And just to give you an idea of other pockets that kind of look good to me. Uh, if you look, let's see here, I'm trying to just scan this real quick, like a pocket like this right here. This type of pocket right in here, that's a great little area. Again, protected from all sides from those different wind directions. That one would be a really good one. Uh, if you move up in here, this pocket right here could be a really good one. It's really flat. It's, again, protected from pretty much all angles other than maybe, uh, it's probably protected enough. This is probably a good one right here. Um, let's see, there's a, there, you know, you got to get the feel for the pockets I'm, I'm thinking about, like this pocket right up here, this pocket, like stuff like that. And I hope that makes sense on what you're talking about. Um, but that is the, um, that's the deal with that type of like pocket deal. And another thing I like to do is I like to find fish that are, both in the backs of the creeks and also out on the main lake. And the reason I do that is because normally the backs of these pockets, the water's going to be shallower and it'll warm up quicker. And so when these pockets warm up a little bit faster, what happens is that those bass will actually spawn sooner. And so these fish in the backs of these creeks may spawn the first week of April. But on the main lake, the water is not going to warm up as fast because it's deeper and the wind's blowing more. And basically the fish are going to wait a little bit longer to spawn so they may spawn like a week later and so a lot of times i like to kind of find some fish there in the backs of these pockets and in the main lake pockets because if these fish for some reason get in that spawning funk like what i talked about in my last video or they go post spawn on me like really fast I'll have some fish here that are post-spawn, and maybe they're just in that post-spawn funk or the pre-spawn funk where they just don't really want to feed. I can run over to the main lake, and I can find bass that are still spawning, and you can look, look for them in pockets like this, like this pocket right here. It's protected on all sides from this island. Even a strong south wind won't hit this pocket because it basically it would just blow right across the front. That's a really good pocket. Um, pockets like this one right here, it's really long and deep. It's protected from the only bad side by a big island. So if you have a strong uh, northwest wind, it'll get protected by that island. So these pockets right here are going to be really good. Um, a lot of times islands are great for protecting these pockets. So like even this big pocket right here could be good. Actually, never mind that. That wind right there would just blow that out. Um, see here. Try to find one more. Uh, even like this pocket right in here. It's protected pretty well by this little outcropping or little peninsula that sticks out. This pocket could be pretty good. So hopefully that's making sense. But really, you just have to think about what wind directions are blowing into these pockets. And if you take a wind at any direction, north, south, east, west, north, with all those different types of angles, which pockets are going to be protected from that most? And that's where I try to focus and look for spawning bass. And you can find them all over the lake. Like bass will spawn literally everywhere. So you don't have to make it that complicated. I just like to do that because I think it gives you the best chance of finding those spawning bass. And maybe it's just it narrows down which you know, spots I'm looking at. So maybe it doesn't actually make any difference. Maybe it's just all in my head, but it works really well for me. And that's what I've been doing. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's kind of Lake Lanier. Hopefully that gave you a pretty good idea of what I'm looking for on Lake Lanier for the spawning bass. Um, and the pre-spawn out here, you know, we've talked so much about the pre-spawn. I don't want to really get into that too much here. I'm going to focus more mainly on the spawning areas. And Lake Lanier is pretty straightforward. Just try to find those pockets. The water's going to be really clear, so those fish are going to be easy to see on the beds. So as long as you find pockets that are protected, that don't have the wind, it'll be also really easy to sight fish for those fish, and that'll be great. So um, seeing a ton of comments here, let me roll through really quick. Uh, thank you, Artie. Always, always throwing out the uh, at fish the moment um, with the question marks, so I appreciate that. Got a few others. So let me just roll through these comments really quick. Oh, there's so many. Y'all are going crazy tonight. 221 people on. That's awesome. So let's see here. Ari says, uh, someone told me that 90% of the fish are deep 90% of the time. How true is that? I actually don't know how true that is. Um, it's really hard to say. I know that a lot of fish do live deep and they live deep pretty much year round, but I don't know how many of them actually move up to spawn. I don't know if all bass move up to spawn or some of them just stay out deep year round. Honestly, I don't know. That is a really good question, and it's probably for a fish biologist to tell you. 
um, or fisheries biologist, not fish biologist, fisheries biologist. Um, does what you talk about relate to smallmouth bass as well, or mainly just largemouth? So, in this sense, with these lakes, um, if your lake has smallmouth, these rules will apply for smallmouth. But like on the Great Lakes stuff like that, it doesn't apply as much because on the Great Lakes, like those are giant, big bowls and big flats. So those fish will move up and spawn in depressions of flats around rocks, stuff like that, and they'll just lay their eggs in a big flat that has wind blowing across it all day in big bays and the fish still spawn, there's no problem. So maybe it's more, you know, a case where it's easier for the fishermen than it actually is about like the eggs getting washed up or whatever. So the smallmouth are always fine on the Great Lakes spawning. So it may be just more of like, you know, in your head and also makes it easier to sight fish for them and easier to actually find those fish uh, when you're doing the techniques I was just talking about. But um, those smallmouth will act differently on those big main uh, or those giant like uh, Great Lakes, but like, the lake we'll be talking about a little bit, Norris Lake in Tennessee, that has some smallmouth, and so we can talk about that. But it's, again, a reservoir. It's not a like Great Lake, like a Lake in Michigan, or even some of the lakes that you have up north, if you think like the St. Lawrence River, places like that where you have uh, a lot of um, places. So, uh, by the way, uh, Jim Middleton, thank you so much for the 199 Super Chat. I appreciate that. I'm going to be able to go get a nice burrito right after this. Uh, chat and fill up my, my stomach. So I appreciate that, uh, Jim. Thanks for the super chat. If you guys want me to eat better than a burrito, appreciate some, uh, you know, maybe three bucks. I might be able to go get like a, uh, a burger or something. Just kidding. You don't have to donate. I'm just, I'm just messing with y'all. But anyways, um, see here's so many, uh, so many comments here. Uh, if we purchase a lake breakdown from website, we'll be able to share it with local clubs and friends. Uh, thanks, uh, Bree. Um, I mean, I guess if you want to, uh, it obviously, as I do the breakdowns, I'll I'll send them to you in a PDF format. You can share them out. It does kind of hurt my you know ability to make breakdowns and um, purchases off my website would decrease. So I don't know. That's up to you. It is your breakdown. Do what you want. Um, but hopefully, you'll continue to come back and do more breakdowns, and it won't you know completely kill the demand for what I'm doing. It does help. Um, you know. Because I do get monetary compensation for the breakdown. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, I mean, it's your breakdown. So you can do what you will with it. Um, especially if you're like doing it for a junior club, stuff like that. I mean, for sure, get the breakdowns. Use it to show the kids where the fish are. If you just want to get one breakdown for the whole club, stuff like that. That's perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, that's just all I'll say there. Anyways, um, are your friends camping? I just picked up a black neon flipping tube. Can you go into how to fish that in a bit? Uh, yes, I'll talk about that when we get into Lake Fayette in a second, because that's one of the baits I'm going to be talking about. And then a bunch of people on here. Some of your current favorite baits for bass on beds. And then fish moment, hashtag winning, bass account. Uh, yeah, I can run through some of my favorite baits for bed fishing real quick. I think that's a good transition here. So one thing I can do is just go up to Tack Warehouse, have some baits pulled up. Uh, I think that'd be a good like little break from talking about all the lakes. I know whenever I talk about baits, you guys like tune out immediately. So bear with me. I'm only going to be talking about baits for a few minutes. We'll get back to the lake breakdowns, I promise. I just know you guys drop like flies when I start talking about baits for whatever reason. Probably because every other YouTuber only talks about baits 100% of the time. No one's talking about the lakes, so I completely get that. But uh, speaking of that black neon tube, Hardy, this is uh, one of my favorite tubes. Our baits in the spawn, you see me talk about before in my videos uh, a lot. I love this black neon tube, especially when I'm fishing in really dirty water during the spawn because I can put that rattle up inside of this tube. My favorite is the Strike King Denny Brower Pro Model Flipping Tube, four and a half inch in the black neon color. And so that's a really good bait during the spawn. As a good profile, the little flanges will kind of jump in the water and those fish will tear it up, especially if you put a rattle in there. Another bait I love to fish on beds is a Strike King Rage shell cracker so the shell cracker is a great bait to fish it has a really subtle action it kind of looks like a bluegill which is awesome thank you so much brooks clayton for the 51 dollars super chat thanks for taking the time to do these uh well worth my education experience and want to support your time to do this keep it up 51 to break the threshold thank you so much bruce you can be the top guy on the top donations board uh you're already on there one time so jump for straight to the top so thank you so much bruce and then we got rocky uh top splash with the five dollar super chat thank you so much uh, rocky appreciate that thank you guys so much for the uh support there and for the support on the website you guys have just been incredible it's been actually really hard to keep up with all the messages so i apologize if you've sent me a message 
I'm going after the stream to go through and try to respond to as many as I can. It's just overwhelming when I'm getting like 50 messages a day. So i um, trying to get back to as many as I can. And sometimes some fall through the cracks just because of the volume. But um, again, really appreciate all the messages on all my social media platforms. It's been incredible. Just people saying, I love the videos. Like, I love those messages. Guys, just take the time to write like a paragraph about how much they like the videos. And I try to get back to those as much as I can. But again, if I haven't, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. So anyways, this uh, shell cracker, really good bait. It has a Nice little twin tail. It's really subtle, but the bass just love this in the spawn. I catch a ton of fish on this. In the green pumpkin color, like a blue craw, also black and blue when the water's a little bit dirtier. And then other bait I love to throw is just a traditional zoom lizard. This is really good on a Carolina rig. A lot of times I'll fish a Carolina rig a little bit further off the bank, and those bass sometimes will spawn out in maybe 7 to 10 feet of water on really clear lakes. You can catch them on a Carolina rig uh, with a lizard on the back, and that's deadly, or just flipping it down the bank on the beds. That bass just can't stand a lizard. They'll pick it up. They'll grab it in their mouth. You can set the hook, crush them. Then the last bait is I love to throw a Jerry Rago Mini BV3D inline swim bait and you haven't seen any of this on my channel because unfortunately I have not made many spawning videos because I'm always in college and right now I'm so swamped with all the lake breakdowns and just making content that I probably won't be able to do too many spawning videos this year either unfortunately but hopefully that can uh, we can find more in the future and years to come but this bait I love to throw whenever the bass start to move up to the beds because what happens you can fire that swim bait out there and reel it right over the top of all of those beds and the spawning areas, and those big females will come up and they'll kind of swipe at it or just kind of move on the bait, and you'll be able to see them, and you actually visually identify where the bass are on the beds with that swim bait, and then you can come back and pitch on them and catch them. So whenever I'm looking for beds and just looking for spawning bass in general, I'm going to be having this swim bait in my hand almost all day, and I'm just going to be firing it up and down the bank, watching the swim bait, but also watching around the area for beds and bass on the beds, and it's a great way to find some really big spawning bass. So I'm going to throw that in the uh, blue ghost and the shad pattern. They're my two go-tos. Sometimes the TW shad, if I get a really... Uh, kind of cloudy day that sartreuse sometimes will kick in the water and it'll be really good and i actually need to order more of these so don't go order all these off taco warehouse um so i can have a couple left for myself for this spring um but anyways uh thank you uh daryl brown for the 199 super chat nerd burrito for me thank you so much uh, i really appreciate that uh, and as always and all the support from you guys um burritos are here are six to ten dollars that's what jp is saying uh good to see you at the classic by the way i think i met jp at the classic um but um if uh six to ten dollars well that's like a chipotle i'm talking about like taco bueno like the the dollar menu burritos not this is not good burritos this is this is like college kids like i shouldn't be eating these um these burritos uh when I'm, working a full-time job as a manager. But anyways, I love I love Taco Boy now. Never too old for it. Anyways, let's let's get off that topic. Let's jump back over to Navionics and let's jump to our next lake, which is Lake Fayette. And that is in Texas. Cool. So Fayette County Reservoir. Now this is a reservoir that is outside of Houston, Texas. And so if we actually zoom out just a little bit here, you can see Houston's right over here. And so uh, I'm sure this is pretty far out from Texas, but I'm sure that people will still might even drive over here. It's about the same distance as Conroe from Houston. So people may drive all the way out here. There's not as many reservoirs. So my thought is, if you look at this, there's people that have marked up this map like crazy. There's so many places marked, all the different high spots and points and just everything out here has been marked. So basically, there's no secrets out on this lake in general just because it's so small and there's probably just a ton of fishing pressure. And so what I want to kind of talk about here is instead of just going and saying, okay, fish the east side of the lake in the morning and the west or the west side of the lake in the morning, east side and later in the day, that's not going to be as helpful on these lakes because there's going to be like 30 boats out here on this little tiny lake and everything's going to be covered up. So instead... Because pretty much everything is open to everyone and everyone's just going to be fishing down the same pockets, what you need to be doing is looking for sneaky spawning areas. And I'm actually going to be making a video about this this week. That's my video for this week is how to find 
the sneaky spawning areas. And so I'm going to talk about that really quick. So hopefully you guys can go out and catch some good fish, uh, find some sneaky spots. So anyways, uh, what I'm talking about here, uh, to do that, I'm going to switch over to Google Earth because that's going to be way easier to talk about these sneaky areas than on Navionics. And there's a couple reasons for that. One second here, let me make some quick adjustments. There we go. So my sneaky spawning areas. So basically, we're at Lake Lanier here. Let's run over to Lake Fayette. Um, someone saying hashtag stay in school. Uh, I am out of school, fortunately. So I graduated with my MBA and I am now working full time. So I don't know who I've lost that comment already, but I uh, I will say uh, stay in school for sure. Um, I'm I've seen a bunch of comments. I wish. Uh, uh, I'm someone saying tackle house or taco house. I'm talking, saying taco bueno. That is where it's at. But anyways, um, uh, Keith. Keith the Trucker, thank you so much for the $20 super chat. He said, water temps are barely in the 50s. Uh, can you point out spots? Yes. So water temperatures are barely in the 50s where he's at. Uh, let me do that on Norris Lake in Tennessee. Uh, for this Lake Fayette, the fish are probably already spawning. And so I will talk about the pre-spawn areas in a bit on Norris Lake for sure because that's something that, like I said, I'm going to be talking about the transition from spawn to pre-spawn. Um, or pre-spawn to spawn, I mean, other way around, pre-spawn to spawn. So I'll focus on that on Norris Lake. But right now, we're going to get into the sneaky spawning areas on uh, Lake Fayette. So what I did is I pulled up Google Earth here and actually pulled the lake back uh, on Google Earth to April of 2006. And the reason I did that is because if you look at this lake normally, when it's at full pool, you can't really see what's on the bottom or what's down there just because the lake is pretty high. But if you take it back to this image in 2006, you can actually see the lake is down just a little bit. You can see a few little sneaky areas out here. And really when I say sneaky areas, what I'm talking about are places where the bass will spawn that aren't really obvious or easy to see. And the kind of places I'm looking for in general are flat pockets where you have some sort of cover out in the middle of the lake. That's one of the key sneaky areas I like to fish. And so, for example, if we go back down like this pocket over here, you'll see there's some really nice standing timber and standing trees. And some of these trees are actually out here on these flats. It's kind of hard to see a little bit, but you might be able to see these trees. These trees out here, the base of these trees are only in maybe two to three feet of water. And a lot of guys will run down these banks and they'll just fish the bank and they may just try to work their way around the bank here. But what you can do is you can actually look for these trees and specifically places where you have stumps where the trees have been cut down. You can't see the tree above water. It's all underwater. And you actually see a couple underwater stumps are really hard to see on here. Um, I can kind of just pick out like one, two, three, just when the water's low. There's a few stumps down there. And it's a nice flat area. And if we go back over to Navionics, again, these are really sneaky, so it's, it may be a little bit hard to see what I'm talking about. I'm making a video about this week that'll be a lot clearer. You'll be able to see like the stumps really well on some of the areas. But if you look at this pocket, here's that same pocket. And it's basically like two, three foot of water back in here, We're like really shallow. It says flooded timber over this area, but it's really shallow water. And basically... When you go over to Google Earth, what you'll see is that you have those stumps down there. And these bass, they'll actually spawn at the base of these stumps. And they'll spawn right in here on the base of those stumps. And they like to spawn around those areas because that stump will create a hard bottom. And so if you have a nice silty, you know, mud bottom here, those bass may not be as willing to spawn there. But if you come in here and you find a few flat areas where you have little trees or little stumps, there's like one, two three stumps. Those underwater stumps, there's one off this point right here. Those bass will spawn on those things and you can fish that tube or a lizard. And that's how I was talking about how do you fish that tube. One way I do it is I'll actually flip that tube on the base of those stumps. And one way you can actually find the stumps is actually just graphing with your side imaging and set the side image view to like 40 feet. So don't do like 120 feet like you normally would see on your uh, size scan, like I run mine like 80 feet, 90 feet. Instead, run it at like 40 feet on both sides, and you should be able to pick out stumps pretty easily. And the way you'll see a stump is what you can do is you can graph down these banks. Just graph down this way. Look at the side scan 
if you're graphing your boat this way, going down the shore, the bank is on your left side of your boat, look on the left side of your side scan and just look for small shadows going off on the left side of your screen. And what that will show you is the stumps. And you'll be able to see the stumps because it will create a little shadow. And I would just mark each one of those stumps with my fish finder. And then you can come back and actually pitch your bait onto those stumps. And it's really cool when you can go down there, you can pitch your bait on those stumps, you can find those really sneaky spawning areas that those fish are on and that you would never really be able to find with your, just your naked eye. And so on a tiny lake like this, on Lake Fayette, Again, everyone's just going to be burning down the banks. They're going to fish all this um, submergent vegetation, emergent vegetation, stuff that's easy to see, easy to find. But those stumps off these points, there's a little stump right there, a big stump right there. Those type of areas, those are the spots where the guys aren't going to find them. The bass will spawn there, and as the guys are driving over the top of these stumps and they're not getting bit, you can mark them on your graph turn around, fire that tube, fire that worm on those stumps and work it really slow. And sometimes it's kind of hard to hit them because you'll mark them on your graph and then you'll have to kind of fan cast the area to make sure you hit those stumps. But it's definitely well worth it. And if you can figure out an area where those fish are at, especially if the stumps are only in two to three foot of water, you can just crush them and catch some big bass doing that, especially... Uh, again, on these really pressured lakes. So that's one of the sneaky spawning areas that I like to try, and that's something I would definitely look for on Lake Fayette. And so hopefully that all makes sense to you guys. And um, see here, bunch of good questions. I'm seeing a bunch of questions here. Oh, yeah, I saw your questions on the fish finders. I will talk about that um, at the end of the stream here. I need to um, check that. In a second, I need to make sure I can get through all these lakes, but I'll get back to all these questions. I'm just looking through, scrolling through, finding these questions. There's a ton of questions on here. About, like, I see E in your question about using mono or fluoro on the Carolina rig. Let me jump to all those at the end. Uh, and if you do have to jump off, I will have this stream live on the um, on my YouTube page, so no problem there. And Kanan, what's up, man? Good to see you. Um, so anyone, anyway, someone's saying, is anyone counting how many times Johnny has said sneaky? That would be a dangerous drinking game, especially when it comes to spawn, because I say sneaky a lot during the spawn. Uh, anyways, so uh, let me jump over to the last lake here, Lake Fayette. That's kind of what I would do other than just fishing down the bank. I can't give too much more advice in the spawn other than what I gave in Lanier a little bit, plus you know fishing the west side versus the east side, plus just fishing down the bank and looking for spawning bass. is not that really that much I can say there other than the fact that you can you know, find those stumps, those hidden places. I'm not going to say the word again, just in case someone did start doing the uh, the drinking game. I don't want to be cause of any mischief tonight. On a Tuesday night, that would be rough. Anyways, so let me jump over to the last lake, which is Norris Lake in Tennessee. So, uh, Keith, let me talk about some pre-spawn areas for you on Norris Lake, as well as some spawning areas, um, because obviously we want to talk about both. And so one thing I will say with the lakes here, water temperatures are saying still in the 50 degree range, low 50s. So uh, a lot of times when water temperatures in the low 50s, those fish are still going to be in that kind of pre-spawn to late pre-spawn mode. And when the water temperatures are warming back up into the 50s, there's two ways that I love to catch bass. And let me actually jump over to the Navionics first before we talk about the Google Earth. And so let me just switch this really quick. Norris Lake. So first thing I'm going to be looking for, and in general, I'm just going to be focusing on this section of Norris Lake, this kind of flatter, kind of more open area, because it reminds me of the lakes I fish. There's a lot going on at Norris Lake. You have like three arms, kind of crazy. You have Cherokee Lake over here, which is a really good lake uh, where they catch them on like Demiki rigs, stuff like that. You can watch the Bassmaster show out there that Jacob Wheeler won. But places, I kind of looked at Cherokee Lake a little bit. Places, you know, at the end of the winter, as the winter is ending, those bass will sit on the tips of these deep points in the mouths of these spawning pockets, and you can catch them offshore off these points, like out here in 30, 40 feet of water, vertically on a Demiki rig. You can catch them off, like, these type of, uh, like, humps and stuff that come out. The creek, main creek channels here, 130 foot, comes up to 30 foot, fish vertically on those fish. You also catch them off these points with a football jig, with a jerk bait, things like that. But that's kind of like more wintertime deal. And then as it starts to warm up, what I'm really looking for are places where the bass are going to be spawning. 
but they're not going to be there quite yet. And basically, flatter areas where you can find um, places where the bass can ambush shad. Because if you think about when the water temperatures are 50 degrees, those bass are almost going to get ready to spawn. So they start spawning when the water temperatures hit about 60 degrees. And during that time they're spawning, those female bass and the males as well, but the female bass specifically are focused 100% on spawning and laying their eggs. So they need as much food as possible to give them energy to spawn. Plus they need as much food as possible to make sure that they can last on the beds for a week or two, like you know, a week at a time without really feeding. They don't feed for a while. So they feed up, they get all this, you know, they see your stomachs get super big so that they can last throughout the entire spawn. And so they're going to put the feed bag on and just chew and eat as much as they can. And so places that I'm looking for are like the points of these islands, for example, where you have a flat point. It's about 10 feet of water up here, and you have a spawning pocket behind it. The bass will move up here in here into spawn. And, you know, this little area back here is great because it's protected from the wind, kind of like we were talking on Lake Lanier. They can spawn back in this pocket because that south wind is going to be blocked by this island, and then all the other winds won't affect it. And this little island has a creek channel running off the side of it. It also has a steep side right here where a 50 feet, 60 feet of water runs into the side of this island. And these bass, what they'll do, especially on windy days and kind of cloudy days, they'll pull up onto these points and start feeding because the shad will get active. They'll start moving up with the wind and the clouds onto these flatter banks. And they're going to be feeding up like crazy on those shad. You could catch them just fishing around these islands, just kind of circling this island with a jerk bait with an Alabama rig, with a swim bait, stuff like that. And, you know, similar areas on Norris Lake that would be good. Like, you know, again, another little island or little uh, point in this island out in front of a spawning bay. You have, as you move back down the lake here, let's find some other quick areas. I didn't get to actually look for these areas um, in my prep, but like here, a nice little flat point right here. Those fish can move up on top of that flat point to, to kind of feed. And in addition to fishing the jerk baits and the Alabama rigs, you can also catch some really good fish on these type of points, fishing a swim bait, like a five, that five and a half inch Jerry Rago swim bait or a seven inch swim bait even to catch some big largemouth on these lakes or big smallmouth as well, like on Norris Lake. And so those type areas are the places where when the wind is blowing up on them, you know, that's a really good technique. Cloudy, windy days, fish the points in the mouth of these spawning bays. And then the other area that I would look for, and this is the way that Jacob Wheeler just won the Bassmaster Classic, is, or not <laughs> Jacob Wheeler, Ottafo, sorry. Uh, Jacob Wheeler finished close, but, uh, Atafo on the Bassmaster Classic uh, was fishing a lipless crankbait and fishing a square bill on some of the flatter, rockier banks. He was fishing out, I think, more towards the main river. Uh, Jacob Wheeler, the reason I said Jacob's name, while I was thinking about the Cherokee Lake. Also, I was just watching his YouTube videos where he was catching uh, most of his fish on like riprap banks and rocky chunk rock banks fishing a square bill crankbait. And so that's a really good technique on lakes like this lake as well, where you have smallmouth bass and largemouth. And really, I'm going to be looking in the backs of these creeks. Okay, I did not plan for this, so it may take me a second to find areas, but like right here, this flat chunk rock bank here, these are perfect for those smallmouth and largemouth to pull up on. They're in the mouth of a spawning pocket, and then you have a really nice deep water stretch that runs in, but you have a nice flat bank. So those fish like to get up on flat banks in the spring, again, because these flatter banks will warm up quicker, plus the rock will warm up quicker. And so these rocky areas, they're flat, they'll warm up really fast. That water temperature will go from 50 degrees up to 60 degrees like that. And Jacob was catching his fish during the classic on areas that looked not exactly like this, but similar on a uh, crawdad square bill crankbait, so a red square bill crankbait. And he's fishing kind of in the mouth of these pockets leading into some of these banks. Again, these nice chunk rock banks leading into these pockets. Maybe even fishing some of these flatter rocky points. Great areas to find some fish. Uh, as you move back into some of these areas, you can see you have nice chunk rock banks between these docks. Another great little area. You can see right here, there's no chunk rock down this bank. Nothing. It's just a flat bank. But then as you move across, you can see that chunk rock starts. And that is the deal when you're looking for those pre-spawn bass. And then the same rules apply on spawning kind of for these areas like Lake Norris as you did on Lake Lanier. 
And the reason I actually like this section of Lake Norris, kind of like I was teasing at the beginning, is because if you look at the rest of Lake Norris, the lake is really, really um, steep, pretty much all around the lake. And actually have the lake drawn down quite a bit using the um, October of 2017 view. But the lake is pretty steep on all of its sides in most of the lake. You can see not much of the bank is kind of exposed as you move around. And when I say that, I'm talking about the bank, the bank between where the water is and where the shoreline is. You can see there's some water exposed like here and here. It's a lot narrower strip of exposed bank on the kind of west arms of Norris and the far east arms. But when you get to this middle bay, you can see a lot of that kind of sandy bottom. That means the banks are a lot flatter moving back in here, and that's really good for the spawn because, again, those flatter banks are going to warm up way faster because the water's shallower. The shallower water will warm up faster along with the muddy water. And so these bass will move up onto these flatter banks to spawn sooner. And places that you want to look on uh, places like Norris for these bass to spawn, if we move back up into some of these little bays, are in particular, one second here, I need to find that, is that pocket I was looking at earlier? Um, one second here, guys. I'm trying to find the, the creek I found that I liked that was good for, the, okay, here we go. Good for this example. So if you look, you have a lot of pockets in here. And the things I'm looking for on these type of lakes, you want to find places where the bass can spawn, but you also want to look for places where they can actually kind of work a bed. When I say that, if you ever look at bass during the spawn, their tails are going to be all beat up from the spawn. And so sometimes bass will spawn on these really flat rock banks, and they'll try to spawn right on top of some of these flat rocks. Like this rock right here is nice and flat, and it may be big enough for them to make a bed. But in general, they need to find a probably you know, a three to five foot area where they can make their bed and dust the bed off to clear enough space for the bass to lay their eggs. And they don't want to make their beds on a little tiny strip of water. They want to make it on a big platform. And so you want a nice flat space they can dust off or where they can lay their eggs. So there may be a few places like down this bank where you may have enough of a flat surface for those fish to lay some eggs. But Better yet than trying to find a really, you know, perfect area on this really rocky shoreline. Just to come over here where you have a literal hole where there's rock, rock, no rock. It's way easier for these bass to spawn on these sandy, you know, pea gravelly areas because they can dust off these areas like nothing. And it's so easy to make a three-foot circle here as opposed to trying to find the perfect rock like this that has a big enough space for those fish to spawn on. And so if I was going to fish out here on Norris and look for spawning bass, I would just focus on the banks where basically you have a really nice sandy bank where you don't have all that chunk rock. Not that the fish won't spawn on this chunk rock, they will. And you can catch fish spawning on that stuff, no problem. It's just they're a little bit more likely to spawn down, again, banks where you have that sandy spots as opposed to that chunk rock. So hopefully that kind of makes sense there on what, you know, kind of is going on with the spawning areas. You know, some of these ba banks, they're all, it's like re really sandy all over it. So there's a lot of water still to cover. And so that's where you have to go back to the idea of, okay, which pockets in here are protected from the wind? In this case, if we look at this pocket right here, this is a prime candidate. You have a nice sandy bank in here, not really much rock. It's also protected on all angles from the wind. There's no way, you know, even if you get a east wind, this is going to be protected from this shore. A north wind, south wind, you guys get the picture. It's going to protect that bank. So this pocket right here is going to be money. Um, and then you get, you know, another pocket like this north-facing pocket here. Again, protected from all wind directions has that nice sandy bank or that like maybe even just like pea gravel bank, that's going to be really good for those spawning bass. So hopefully that all makes sense on the spawn. Hopefully that made sense on the pre-spawn. So, um, you know, pretty straightforward. There's not that much that goes into the spawn, at least in my opinion. The biggest thing is figuring out when those fish spawn and the time of day they're going to pull up and what time of the year they're going to start spawning. And I actually uh, took some guys out like Washita last weekend for a fishing lesson and we actually struggled to catch some fish and part of it was because water temperatures were changing a lot and we were on the upper end of the Lake Washita and we were fishing out there and basically you know the fish were 
the water temperature was like 58 to 60 degrees, and those fish, I think, were getting in that spawning funk. They're getting a little bit messed up because of all that weather, warming up the water really quickly. Uh, but we didn't really see many tournament boats around us either. We were pretty much by ourselves all day. But then on the lower end of the lake, that's where I normally catch a lot of good fish. As we were running down that way, we saw the water temperatures were cooler, 56, 55 degree water on the clear end of the lake. So if you look at a lake like this, you have... You know, the upper end of this lake is going to be dirtier water, shallower. It's going to warm up quicker as opposed to the deep, clear part of the lake where the water is going to be deeper, clearer. It's going to warm up slower. And we basically were basically in the wrong part of the lake is what I would think. And that's the reason why I don't think we were finding the fish um, where I was expecting to find them at least. And I wasn't maybe doing the best job fishing the moment either in that situation, kind of forcing the bite on them. So that's a good learning for myself. But at the same time, you didn't want to run the guys all the way down the lake to go to fish the lower end. But that's you know something to pay attention to. You can you know the guys on the lower end of the lake. Uh, well, I mean the tournament was won with like 20 pounds that day, and we had like five fish for like eight pounds, like nothing. And so we were just on the wrong side of the lake where the pre-spawn bass were on the lower end. We were on the upper end. There were probably still good fish to be caught in our area. We just didn't figure it out in that day, which, you know, that's just fishing too. So don't feel bad if you go out and, you know, you see guys in your tournament catching 18 pounds, 20 pounds, and you go out and catch, you know, eight pounds of fish. Two things for that. One, these guys probably fished lake a lot. You know, they got in the right stretch. There's a lot of factors to it. Also, it's fishing. You don't always figure out the fish, and so don't get discouraged, but also know that if you're fishing an area and you're not catching them, there's always going to be a better spot around the corner, and fish are always biting. So pretty um, good lesson learned from me there, and just to kind of show you guys as well. So anyways, a um, bunch of people are still on. Got 200 people on, and so I'm going to start rolling through some of these comments because I want to try to get out of here right at 8 o'clock if I can, and so I'm going to roll through all the uh, at fish moment comments best I can. And so let me just roll through these really quick. And this is everyone's favorite part because I'm literally reading comments and not able to talk so much and so hopefully um let's see here get through this okay so uh tyson asks where can we get that shirt so this shirt you can actually get it i'm going to try to get some of these on my website uh so you guys can buy them but the place you want to go is um bass attitude so bass attitude fishing um here's the Thing. These guys are going to be the guys who are helping me with my merch. Bass Attitude Fishing. You can go to their website and they will make you this. Uh, it's basically a fish like on your sonar and it says Graffin. Graffin. It's really cool. I love this shirt. So I'm going to try to get Fish the Moment shirts. We're going to do sun shirts, t shirts. We have one second here. I can't reach my hat. You guys have seen these before. We got my Fish the Moment hats, uh, Fish the Moment sun gloves. All kinds of stuff. We got carpet stickers potentially coming. So let me know actually in the comments, guys, what you guys think would be a good um, a good deal for merchandise. What would you want for merchandise? Uh, we can work and try to get you know whatever you guys need. Obviously, I can't hold like 75 SKUs. So we have to figure out um, a compromise there. But um, I'm probably going to put a poll on my Patreon page for that and also on YouTube to see what you guys want for merch because I know that there's some people who have interest there. Uh, thank you, Matt uh, Mason, for the four ninety nine super chat. He says, love the channel, man. Wish I lived in the Midwest so I could fish with you. Uh, one thing I will say there is I'm planning this year to actually take a few days off and travel to different parts of the country, South Carolina, Tennessee, maybe out to California even, and do some fishing lessons with you guys in those areas. And I may actually try to do some fishing events where you do like a two-day event where you guys can actually come, do a two-day event with me, fish with me for two days. We can uh, go on the water. I can make, make the event open to like, six, seven boats, and you guys can come in and talk to me about fishing. We'd have, like, live lessons. Uh, we'd have, like, seminars, plus we go out in the water and fish, and, you know, it'd be multiple boats out there, so it wouldn't be, like, a one-on-one -on -one lesson, but it would be you get me for, you know, an hour, two hours a day in your boat, plus um, all the on-the-water instruction, lake breakdowns, talk about the conditions. Seems like a really cool event potentially and also because I'm not going to be able to be around so much hopefully I'll be able to reach more people um, if I'm only there for three four days at a time so let me know what you think about that idea in the comments and if that's something you guys would like to do still uh, just thinking about that so Artie says I have heard the shell cracker is going out of production is that true I did not know that it might be I'm not sure um let's see here 
Mike is saying, hey, Johnny, congrats on launching your website. Looks great. All the best. A++++. Thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, and Preston saying, let's talk about Norris. Please have a tournament this weekend. Uh, hopefully, Preston, that helped you out a little bit. Um, I know I didn't give you exactly the spots, exactly like where to fish. Hopefully, that gave you some ideas on what to be looking for. Also, check out that Lake Cherokee Bassmaster Elite Series event. That would be a good one to check out. Um, Someone's talking about Googans. I'm just going to ignore that. Uh, how are you guys uh, sending money? There's a little super chat button down there. Uh, Rudy, uh, if you want to go down on your computer, um, you can also click on your phone. There's a way to use super chats on your phone. If you click the little, uh, there's like a down arrow somewhere on the screen, which takes like opens the description and everything. You should be able to see that. And then also another great way to support the channel if you, can't do the super chats here. It's just go over to my Patreon page, which is uh, basically patreon.com slash fish the moment. And all of the lakes I looked at today were recommended by my Patreon subscribers. And basically, if you join Patreon, $5 uh, donation helps the channel, helps me continue to do what I'm doing. So really small price to pay um, to you know have your potential, have your lakes looked at. Plus, you can vote on my video ideas, upcoming video ideas. I've been doing as much as I can on Patreon at the moment. I'm planning on doing more and more and more as I continue to get some bandwidth after I've launched the website and kind of get my feet back underneath me. But a lot of cool stuff coming to my Patreon page, a lot of perks and stuff they're going to those members and so definitely check out the patreon page if you haven't already and then see here bunch of other questions um so a bed fishing tip uh from me J jt says i recommend starting with the swim bait to fire the fish up first and once you get the sweet spot both the male and the female get defensive over uh over your baits and rotate through your baits Good call there, JT. Um, definitely going to be making some videos, hopefully, on spawning and how to, like, find the spawning fish, what to look for, and how to kind of irritate those fish. So I only get, like, one day a week to fish, so I don't even know if I'll be able to get out during the actual spawn very much. So hopefully I'll be able to, but um, let's see here. bunch of other people one second here uh thanks for bait suggestions dan uh stl no problem man um uh a one dollar burrito bass accountant says hey those are pretty cheap but they're really good uh ian wagner good to see you again man good to meet you at the classic he says um are you using mono or fluorocarbon for your carolina rig so my carolina rig i normally throw uh a monofilament main line uh, sometimes I'll throw a fluorocarbon mainline. The reason I s would throw a fluorocarbon mainline on my Carolina rig is if I'm trying to feel the bottom. So with a Carolina rig, what happens is if you fire that Carolina rig out there and you drag across the bottom, the mono is less sensitive than a fluorocarbon line. And so you won't be able to feel as much with that monofilament line as you will with a fluorocarbon. So sometimes if you're trying to tell if it's a rock pile or a shell bed or something like that, I'll throw 20 pound fluorocarbon as my main line, and then I'll switch up to uh, 20 pound monofilament if I know what's down there and I'm just trying to fish like a Carolina through a brush pile or whatever. It doesn't matter what the line is. And then for my leader line, I normally fish either a two to four foot leader of 15 pound fluorocarbon line. I'll sometimes go to a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader, but I always like that fluorocarbon as my leader because it's just, you know, a little more invisible. Also, it's, you know, not that bad to cut three, four feet of line off a spool of fluorocarbon as opposed to spooling up a whole reel of fluorocarbon, which can get pretty expensive. Um, let's see here. Got, um, once I find bent fish, uh, oh, got some other questions here. So Caleb Morgan says, sneaky snakes. Um, JC Bass Fishing Channel, can you cover Lake Harding in Georgia? Um, Best way to kind of get your lake suggested, again, do the Patreon page. It's the fairest way uh, I could do that because I get a, so many requests, like, constantly for lakes. And so Patreon page is the best way to kind of sort that out. Um, and so I post before my streams every time on my Patreon page with the lakes are going to be um, do that. But you can also do a lake breakdown on my website. One thing I will say is I know a lot of you guys are asking for lake breakdowns of your lake through my website. And you notice that they're sold out at the moment. And... Unfortunately, uh, I you know don't have a ton of time to do lake breakdowns. I work full time, and so I can try to get to maybe about ten per month, and that is 
you know, right there, 10 per month is like 15 hours of time just to get those breakdowns out. And so, you know, it, I put, try to put a lot of good effort in those breakdowns. I don't just, you know, throw it together randomly. I try to give you good areas I think are going to be good, try to give you good descriptions of the areas. So I do put my time into those. So uh, I will try to have every two weeks, I'm going to be putting up like five, four to five breakdowns on my webpage so you guys can purchase those. And then hopefully as I start getting better at them and get like a better format, better descriptions, I can streamline the process a little bit more, but at the moment it takes a really long time to get them. So anyways, um, you know, tons of stuff. Um, and then uh, Rudy says, Johnny, I'm a recruiter. Look me up on LinkedIn. I'll help you get a real job. Um, I don't know what that means. I do have a real job at the moment, um, but uh, I will try to check you out. I'll take a picture of your, of your stuff right now. Why not? I'll check you out on, on LinkedIn, Rudy. Um, who knows? Uh, I'm really interested to see what a real job is. That's very interesting. That's like really piqued my, my interest right there. Uh, anyways, um, thank you again though for the, the comments and for everything today, Rudy. And then we got, um, are you saying how much value is there in fishing isolated floating docks in the middle of creeks? I love fishing isolated floating docks. There's not any docks on this lake. Can we find a, a lake with docks? Um, where can we go? Let's go over here. Why not go to Hartwell? Hartwell has like a couple docks, right? <laughs> Just a few. Um, so one thing I love about fishing docks in the spring, especially if you can find an isolated dock, is that uh, if I can find one, I'll show you guys what he's talking about. Like right here, boom. Got an isolated boat dock right here. The one thing I love about fishing isolated boat docks is because if you look, well, there's another boat dock right here. We'll ignore that one. But if you look at this boat dock, this lake is really far down. Let me take it down, take it back to when it's not rock bottom. It's a really good image. Wow, this lake is, is this, is Lake Carwell always like 100 feet low? Never mind. Anyway, there we go. So like isolated boat dock here. I love fishing these isolated boat docks because if you look, basically if the fish want to get in some sort of shade or some sort of cover, and they spawned up in this pocket, the only place they're going to go is this boat dock or this boat dock. The only other places they could go is out here in the middle, or they'd have to swim like around the corner to get to these boat docks or around the corner to get to these. So whenever I can find an isolated boat dock like this or like an isolated boat dock off the tip of a point here, definitely going to stop and fish it. If I'm running down the lake and I just see one of those, I always go fish isolated boat docks like 100% of the time just because you never know. Like you look running down this bank. You have a nice, like, isolated boat dock right here. You have a bunch of laydowns here, which is not the best example because it gives a lot of cover for the fish to get on. But hopefully you guys get my point with the isolated stuff. But if you find, like, one boat dock down this, like this, one boat dock down this huge bank and there's nothing else there, I'll run and fish this boat dock even in the middle of the summer, in the beginning of the winter, whatever, especially if there's deep enough water by it. Uh, this one looks like it does have some deeper water by it. It's not super shallow like the last one I showed. So hopefully that makes sense. See here, a bunch of different people leaving stuff. Uh, David Ellis says, I mark some stumps on side scan, but when trying to find them down scan, I don't see them. The distance must have been awful little. Ever, ever had that issue? Yes, David. I do have that issue a lot, actually, uh, especially if the stumps are in like two foot of water. It's really hard to scan stuff with down scan and 2D sonar when you're in like a two foot, three foot of water. And so that's why I like to use the side scan because it really does make it, um, easier to find them. So sometimes when I just am scanning over stuff, like I don't see it on my like down scan. And also, if you think about the stump, it's only this big around. And so if you're driving over and your transducer doesn't come perfectly over the center of that, um, even if you think you're driving right over the center of that waypoint, those stumps are so small, it's hard to drive right over the top of them. So normally, again, you have to fan cast those areas to find those stumps, which it makes it takes a little bit of extra effort, but it definitely is worth it. Um, let's see here. Do you ever use prop baits? Um, or if so, can you go into how you fish them? I do have a video already on prop bait fishing on my channel. Um, it is a video about brim bed bass fishing. If you look up how to fish brim beds on my channel or like fish the moment brim beds or fish the moment, um, yeah, I think fish the moment brim beds will work. I was fishing a little, um, prop bait, Kelly, Kelly J Lucky Craft prop bait. And it talks about all about how to fish those. Um, let's see here. 
Justin Cook is saying, are you using weight on your soft plastics when bed fishing? And are you pegging it if so? So yes, I normally throw a pretty lightweight, so a quarter ounce or a 3 16th ounce when I'm bed fishing most of the time. I will fish a weightless uh, Cinco a lot and also a little weightless Wacky Reworm. And my go-to spawning baits, if I'm fishing like the, the Lizard or fishing the uh, Shell Cracker, I'll fish that with a quarter ounce weight. And then if I'm fishing the weightless sink, obviously it's weightless. Um, and, you know, I'll fish a wacky reworm a lot on bedfish. I'll fish a drop shot on bedfish, a lot of different baits. But generally, if I'm just going and trying to bedfish, um, just for fun, I'll fish the shell cracker and the lizard. But then if I'm really fishing a tournament and want to work a bass for 15, 20, 30 minutes, that's when I'll switch up to a wacky reworm. I'll fish all kind of crazy baits. I'll drag a 10 inch worm through the bed. I'll throw a giant magnum lizard and a magnum. Uh, stick bait like a like a seven inch striking ocho i've caught some giant fish on a seven inch striking ocho i'll throw all the different baits in there like five inches i'll fire a like magnum bait in there and right away those fish will grab it so interesting stuff i don't know with spawning bass it's weird because you just basically have to throw like every bait in the tackle box sometimes and every once in a while you'll find a bait that just gets that one particular bass to get excited the next bass will be completely different let's see here and Thomas says, I think you have at least two real jobs. That's pretty funny. I know, right? I feel like I have two real jobs at the moment. Um, a real job is Bass Master. Um, it's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Sounds a question. Tiger, uh, he says, Johnny, you're doing a great job. Thanks so much, Tiger. And thanks, Tiger, again, for joining the Patreon page as well, doing the breakdowns. Really appreciate that. Um, any collab with Fluke Master, etc. Not really sure about collaborations. Um, potentially collaborations in the future, but I'm not really sure. Um, uh, we will see. Who knows? Uh, there's a couple of guys I've been talking to at the Classic that seem really cool. That I might do some collaborations with, but at the moment, nothing particularly on my radar. Um, JT says, be prepared for the Fish Moat merch to be sold out pretty quick. Johnny, just saying. <laughs> you get a Flash the Moment shirt is what I really need. Um, and then, let's see here. Kane said, I caught them pretty decent at Lake Washtenaw last week. A Carolina Reed brush hog and a Senko in the backs of creeks on the upper end of Washita. They would move up in the evening. Gotcha. It's a Carolina Reed brush hog in the backs of creeks. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I just completely missed that bite, apparently. I was doing something similar to that, too. That's interesting. But that's what fishing goes. You know what I mean? Um, let's see here. A bunch of guys. Do you ever use okay, prop baits? Okay, got a bunch of other good questions. Already asked. Um, oh, can you all see me? Did I? Did you lose me? Hmm. I don't know if y'all can see me. Okay, I'm good? Okay. It's not showing on my screen. We see you. You're here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay. Anyways, I am going to probably close it up because it's like freezing on my screen. It shows it's good on my uh, my streaming software. So anyways, hopefully y'all can see me, but I'm also pretty much over time. A couple more questions here right now. Uh, Willie J. Allen says, uh, love your channel. I'm from Florida and we are in the post-spawn or past that. Uh, not sure on the water temperatures there. I would think you guys are getting close to, to post-spawn, um, or you are post-spawn at this point, but there may be another wave of fish that moves up. A um, bunch of other questions here real quick. Uh, any sun gear shirts? Yes, Caleb. Going to definitely get some sun shirts for sure. And then is there lag? There's lag. Okay, cool. Well, there's a bunch of lag. Apparently, I'm having some issues here, so... What uh, plan is to probably jump off. Looks like a lot of guys have to leave anyways. And so hopefully you guys are um, enjoying the stream. Hopefully you can s still see everything. Uh, Keith says, good information, man. Thanks. And other than that, hope you all enjoyed the stream. And I'll be back next week on Tuesday with another live stream. And I'm also going to be posting my live stream schedule on my website going forward, hopefully, so you guys can get a better idea of when I'm doing the streams. I know it's not been super consistent, but other than that, hope you guys have enjoyed the stream. And I will see you guys next week, same time, 7 p.m. Central time on Tuesday. And other than that, see you next time. And good fishing.